Hey folks, I'm Navar, and welcome to Solar Punk Station, where we're building regenerative futures. I think at this point in 2022, we're seeing that climate deniers are kind of fading out of the picture, but we still do have climate delayers. And climate delayers are people who say, okay, climate change is a problem, yeah, I guess, but we don't have solutions, or that would be too expensive. I mean, ignore, of course, ignoring the fact that how expensive it will be if we don't do anything. But, you know, that's their thing. So I think this book I just read called Electrify by Saul Griffith is a really good book for this particular audience. Um, you can't judge a book by its cover, but if you check out this, this shiny blue lightning bolt on the white background, I mean, that just screams future to me. I don't know about you. And... While tech bros, they're promising techno-utopian carbon capture machines that are more efficient than trees. Yeah. Um, this book is, is not that. It's grounded in really rampant pragmatism. Which doesn't sound like the most exciting blurb, but, but that's what I'm going to go with. Griffith lays out in this book a pathway to decarbonizing the United States transportation and power sectors with only existing technology, nothing that has to be invented, uh, all super bog standard solar, wind, geothermal, things that all exist that we know how to do. I think the plan to electrify everything is a necessary but not sufficient component of a solar punk future. The catchphrase usually comes with some caveats such as not every piece of industry is going to go electric. There'll probably be some industrial processes that use hydrogen, for example, for high temperature applications. And I think solar thermal could really use more of a boost, both in this book and just in general. I feel like everyone talks about photovoltaics, which are when you turn the sunlight into electricity. but a large percentage of household use of electricity or fuel goes toward making heat and it's a lot more efficient just to go straight from light to heat with solar thermal and you can heat your air you can heat your water it's all awesome so we should do more of that just because it's it's more efficient and it's also not putting all of your eggs in one basket which given some of the recent power outages here, having sort of a two parallel systems makes me feel a little bit better to have that, that redundancy, if you will. When I first started recording this review, I didn't really think Griffith was addressing climate justice. And at first I felt like maybe we could just give him a pass for that because this book was about how it was technologically feasible to fight climate change and that wasn't a valid argument anymore. But then I thought more that that's just not acceptable. That's not okay anymore. It's 2022. We know better. We need to be bringing climate justice conversations to the table from the beginning. Because if we don't, it's something that's going to get left behind. And we can't tell people to wait until this crisis is averted, like has been happening for the last hundred, several hundred years. The more I thought about it and thought about this in my head, the more I was thinking that although it's not super progressive, I think Griffith is addressing climate justice in this book, but he did it in such a way that it didn't trigger my climate justice checkbox in my brain and that was really clever. The way he's approached it really short circuits that, that gap between right and left terminology. We can't solve climate change if only the rich people can afford to electrify their lives. So how do we make sure we bring everybody along? How do we make that fair? Fairness is something people understand and you can get at without getting bogged down in political terminology. And I think Griffith does a really good job of that here. Even if it's not the most progressive policy solutions, I think he does a good job of bringing climate equity to the table without saying the words and 
having people run away screaming. Griffith lays out a clear but concise explanation of how daunting climate change is, especially once you start looking at committed emissions, but then paints a solution by the numbers as to how we can overcome it and be more prosperous by doing so. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of all the militaristic language used to describe climate work, but the comparison in this book to World War II just as a sort of measuring stick for the amount of GDP we would need to commit to the effort is actually very useful since that's something people can wrap their heads around as opposed to the increasingly large number climate bill plans that Democrats were announcing, say, during the 2020 presidential election, just trying to one-up each other for how much money they could spend without any real tangibility to that. I think part of the reason why climate inaction has been such an easy sell for the powers that be is because climate change is such a big problem. It feels like, what can I, what can I do? Like, I'm one person. But Griffith points out that families are sort of our basic economic unit in the United States, which I know St. Andrew has some thoughts on, so you should check out his video on Rethinking Family if you haven't. It's really good, as an aside. But Griffith is pointing out how families, when they're selecting their own personal infrastructure, their stoves, their water heaters, their heating systems in their houses, and their cars if they have them, how making better selections there can lead to significantly reduced carbon emissions. I know centrism is a dirty word in solar punk circles, but I don't really think that we're going to succeed in overcoming climate change or climate injustice if we're not going to try to work with people who are coming from different political backgrounds. Red states already generate more renewable energy than blue states, so that's a starting point. The Republicans I do know, they believe in fairness and they believe in justice, but the heads of the Republican Party and conservative radio talk show hosts have had decades to change what those mean words mean in a political context, how what sort of policies are fair, who do we worry about when we're looking at what's fair. And we aren't going to overcome that sort of indoctrination overnight. I think this book is a step in the right direction, even if sometimes it does seem a little bit like neoliberal techno-utopianism. I think there's more going on here than that, but maybe I'm just naive. I am going to send a copy of Electrify and my copy of The Repair Revolution to my dad. He is a retired guy who's currently working as a solar installer just to keep himself busy since he has a certification in that. And he also put solar on their old house and their new house that they retired in. He's also a Trump supporter, which has led to some mm, strain over the last few years. And I'm hoping this book will at least bridge that gap between knowing renewable energy is cool and knowing we need to do something about climate change and that we can do it without there being some massive government takeover of industries, which is something that Republicans really live in fear of anytime climate change comes up. Is this going to make him gung-ho about climate justice? No. But at least maybe he'll be interested in talking about climate solutions instead of just shutting down the conversation. And it's not going to be an easy, easy process for us to get to a solar punk future. There are a lot of people with a lot of different ideas about what we should do. And some of them are definitely like terrible, heinous, awful things. And I think there are a lot more people that don't feel that their concerns are being addressed and that people just want to throw them away. 
as part of the process of dealing with climate change. And I think we really need to address that. Trying to make sure that we're actually connecting with people first. That's something we have to do. We're, we're in such a shouting match, we can't actually solve a problem. We're, we're too busy yelling at each other. Electrify shows that there is a way forward and the energy transition doesn't have to be painful. Even if getting all the way to a solar punk future may be, especially with some of the social changes, changing from one fuel to another shouldn't be a hard thing, and it doesn't have to be. And that's what Electrify is really here for. And I think it's, it's a good first step to getting where we need to go. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. If you want to support the channel, Check out the affiliate link to IndieBound below in the description. Uh, that will help me out and help out a local bookstore. Again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you all have a good day. The catch fries, catch fries, catch fries. I feel like this book needs like a Southern Preacher's introduction of Electrify, an Optimus playbook for our clean energy future. Is that too much? I don't know. Probably.